what is up guys eddie with learn then teach here back at it again with the third video of the reversing for newbies series um today we're going to be looking at some basic concepts in regards to the pe file format uh, pe stands for portable executable and uh, this format basically you know it's it's how portable executables are structured how executables in windows are structured um, memory wise so we're going to be taking a look at some basic concepts in today's video and then i'm thinking i'm probably going to end up making a separate video to explain the pe file format in depth um, there's a lot to talk about there so if i were to talk about it in this video it'd probably end up being like an hour long so i'm going to save that for a different video and today we're just gonna you know touch on those basic concepts in order to get what we need to get done all right first things first let's take a look at the target program today so we can see how it works get that pulled up here and launch that so you see right off the bat when we start the program we get a pop-up that says remove the nags to register this will make the program fully registered okay that's what we're gonna do today then you click OK and then you get uh, launched into the main instance of this program um, you know we see register me wait no longer pretty much letting us know that the product is not currently registered if we exit that we get another error message that says oops I am not registered before I jump into the analysis first and foremost I just want to thank you guys for being so patient uh, you probably noticed my desktop is different my icons moved around and all that stuff and that's because I was having computer issues um, but I'm back now and I do look forward to continuing uh, Lino 151's Reversing for Newbie series and both teaching myself and you, the viewers. Uh, one announcement I want to make before we jump into things is the fact that I am going back to Ollie Debug, and I'm doing that for two reasons. First reason being is because it's just way easier to follow along with, um, you know, Lino's tutorials using the same debugger that he's using. Um, and not only that, but I find that the memory window in uh, Ollie Debug is just more comprehensive in terms of, you know, taking a look at things like the PE file header and, and things like that, which we're going to have to deal with in this video. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So I'm going to open up Ollie and we're going to load the reverse me. Uh, the download link to this reverse me as well as Lena 151's um, tutorial is also going to be in the description. And uh, opening things up here, we see a Windows API function get called right off the bat. We got <clears throat> get module handle A. And if we pull up our trusty documentation here, we'll see that, sorry, wrong Windows API function. We'll see that get module handle A um, retrieves a module handle for the specified module. And the module must have been loaded by the calling process. In layman's terms, what's happening is uh, get module handle is returning the image base of the register me executable. The image base is where the Windows loader maps the actual program into memory, right? So remember that Windows API functions always manipulate the EAX register. That's where the return of that function is going to end up. And so what's happening here in the next line is we have. Um, the return of that Windows API function getting stored in, in, into a referenced pointer. The next line we have zero being compared to EAX. Now it's really important to realize that this compare will never be true. Um, pretty much as long as the program runs and gets mapped into memory, it'll never be equal to zero. And so this next conditional jump you can already see is not going to be taken. And what's going to happen is we are going to keep going down and we're going to start here. I'll actually show you. You see, we, we didn't take the jump. And so now what's going to happen is we pushed the arguments for the message box onto the stack. You can see here uh, the actual title and you can see the body of the message box. And here it goes right here. And that's because we didn't we didn't, you know, bypass that jump. So now it's time to think about how we want to go about bypassing our first message box. There's a couple of ways we can actually do that. Um, first being we could turn this jump if equal to into a jump with no condition. And that would basically, you know, pretty much just jump us straight into the main window of the program. We could also uh, NOP 
all the arguments for the for this message box and just hit it with a no operation and that way it would never pop up um, we could also use our windows api knowledge and push one here as opposed to a zero and if we look at the windows api uh, documentation here what that would do is assign an owner window to the message box in this case that doesn't exist since that owner window doesn't exist the message box would never pop up basically it's a way to trick the windows api the cleanest solution however and that's the solution we're going to be going with today would be to just completely move the entry point of the program and by that i mean instead of starting here at 004010000 we start at a point where the message box is out of out of scope and that would end up being um right here at this uh at this memory address uh zero zero four zero one zero two four I don't know why I insist on reading those numbers out loud, but it is what it is. So that would be the ideal, the, the ideal thing to do. How do we go about doing that? First and foremost, we have to get acquainted a little bit with the PE format. Um, the PE format is a file format for executables, uh, object code, uh, and DLLs, which is used in both 32-bit and 64-bit versions of the Windows operating system. The PE format contains all the code, all the data, uh, resources that an executable file uses. Um, you can kind of think of it like a chef, right? As a chef, you have a bunch of different individual ingredients that by themselves don't really do anything but when you put them all together you get a nice cohesive dish right in this case when you put all the different you know subsections of the program um, you know all the code all the data all the resources into one that's how you get your working executable so let's visualize what the actual PE format looks like and Lena used this great picture in his tutorial that kind of lays um, the structure of it all out for us. So we have our MZ header, we got our stub, we got the PE file header, we got the optional header, um, and we have our section table. All of these uh, subsections combine to make the PE header, right? And the PE header is normally located at the image base until the image base plus 1000. That may sound a little confusing, but take a look at our program, right? What is our entry point here? Our entry point is um, 00401000. So if we take what I just said into account, then that means we can find the start of our PE header by dropping that 1000, right? So let's take a look at that. Um, if I go into the hex dump and I go to expression, and we type that in and we follow that expression you can see that in the hex dump we have our what's called magic numbers 4d 5a which correspond to the ascii values m and z if we take a look at our picture again you see that our mz header those two letters correspond and so now effectively we have found the start of the PE header. However, today we're more interested in the PE file header more than anything else because this section actually contains um, information about the entry point of our program. Now we could try and discern um, the different structures in the hex dump, but Ali um, helps us wonderfully in that regard. So we're going to be using the memory map and you can find that up at the top denoted by the letter M. And Ali Debug's memory map window shows the virtual address, the virtual size, the owner uh, module, section names, memory allocation types, memory protections for each allocated region of memory in the process. However, uh, for today we're only interested in our PE header which you can see right here. So we're going to go ahead and double click that. And as you come in here, you can see um, the beginning and end of the MZ header, right? Uh, you can, you can, it's all grouped together with this little bracket right here. 
And interestingly enough, towards the end of our MZ header, we actually have our PE offset. Now, this um, essentially points to the beginning of the PE file header, which contains the information regarding our executable's entry point. Remember that the data in the header is info for the Windows loader. The Windows loader automatically adds the image base, in our case, um, is four zero 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 four six zeros or uh, five zeros, sorry, to the offset that it finds in the header and maps it into memory at that location. So it would be four five zeros and you replace the last three zeros with zero C zero and that ends up pointing to the beginning of the PE file header. If we scroll down, you can actually see that be supported here. You can see the PE um, file header start right here, and it starts at 0040000C0. So Windows added our image base to that offset, and that's where it was mapped into memory. Make sense? Now the next thing to do is to find our entry point. Now for whatever reason, your entry point, it's probably gonna be right under size of uninitialized data. Uh, for whatever reason, I it showed up when I tried this a couple of times ago, but it's not showing up now. So you should see under this um, address of entry point equals 1000 and then where this one is right here you should see base of code equals 1000 but for whatever reason i have add byte uh I'm, i got a pointer here now this first one right here is our entry point if we right click it go to hex look at that in ascii in 16 bytes you can see um what corresponds to the entry point it ends up being uh these two bytes right here and if we take a look at the um, address on the left, it's 00430E3. And if we take a look at our hex dump here, um, we're still you know, near the uh, MZ file header. If you go down towards PE, you can actually see right here, specifically in this section, the same values let me uh, go back to the PE file header. Sorry. If I double click on this, you can see I got 0010, which actually corresponds to 1000. That's our entry point. Now, in order to instead enter here where we want to, which is past the message box, we need to change the last two zeros to two four so right here where we got pointed to when we looked at it in the pe file header over in the memory map if we right click this byte right here and we edit and do a binary edit on that and we change that to two four that's going to add or that's going to change the entry point to now instead of 1000 it'll be 1024 and the reason it's seen backwards here is because you have to take into account Indians. There's big Indians and there's little Indians. And they're uh, ordered in terms of, or they're ordered by significance. It's, that's another topic in and of itself that could probably be covered in another video. So we assembled that two four there in place of those two zeros now if we right click and we edit and we copy to executable we're going to go ahead and patch this executable now to see if that change actually worked we're going to save that file hit yes i'm going to save it to uh, my desktop here and i'm going to save that as an executable i'm going to register register me.exe now if i open this and there is no first message box then we have successfully changed the entry point if I open this and there is still a first message box, then we have to go in and make some more changes. So let's see, moment of truth. You can see no first message box. We get jumped straight into the main program. 
So we successfully patched um, the entry point of the program. Now let's load that uh, new program into, if I can find my desktop here, sorry. I'm kind of slow sometimes. Now if we load that in, you can see that as, as opposed to starting up here at this address, we now start at this address. And as you can see, we completely skip um, everything above that, en that new entry point. Now all that's left to do is to patch that last message box. And due to the fact that this last message box doesn't rely on any conditional jump to show itself, it kind of does it every time without failure, we're just going to go ahead and hit it with a no operation. So we're going to select every parameter of this of the message box. So this ends up being, you know, the handle window, uh, the title text, uh, you know, the, the body text, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So we want to right click that. And then we want to edit and we want to fill with knobs, no operation. And then we want to right click that. We're going to go to edit again and copy that to executable. So we're going to go ahead and patch that in, save it again, save it to my desktop as an executable. I'm going to override it over the other one. Now, if all is well, and I open this program on my desktop, we will jump straight into the main window of the program and when we exit we won't be prompted with a message box towards the end so let's see how we're doing straight into the main module entry point change with success was successful now if i close this no more message box the program just exits and we have successfully patched our program utilizing some basic pe file header principles see you guys in the next video